Hello friends, welcome back to the tech news of the day. This is what we call hot news. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be jumping right on into it, including AMD's mini ITX system that I absolutely want. Razer announced a whole bunch of stuff and Tesla finally ready for full self-driving. So let's first start off with that AMD Project Quantum, as it is so named, which is a project that apparently existed around four years ago that was mysteriously killed off. That's supposed to be a beautiful mini ITX PC that has been recently found in brand new patents and filings from AMD. As you can see, based on the image here, the patent has been filed as of September 15th, and you can see that this is just a unique take on a gaming PC. All of the hardware, which includes mini ITX stuff, is housed here in the top part with the radiator and cooling and fans all down in the bottom section, just kind of making it a neat approach to what otherwise would be a boring gaming PC. Actually, scratch that, reverse it, cooling stuff's on top, all the parts are on the bottom. My bad, I got it wrong. It doesn't even exist at this point, so we don't we don't really know. But the intriguing part of this is that it was unveiled at E3 back in 2016, and at the time, as you can see, based on the product images, says that it featured a Radeon R9 or had two R9 Fiji GPUs in it with being completely liquid cooled. So this was a full crossfire system, and it's just a very cool Cool looking mini ITX case. I actually really enjoy this. And if AMD is bringing this back in order to keep us happy with their new Ryzen 5000 and big Navi GPUs, I'd be all for it. Apparently one of the reasons that they canceled it was because of the fact that they didn't think it would sell that well, especially since they were putting the dual Fiji GPUs into their more server level stuff with the Radeon Pro Duos. And they were also gonna have to feature an Intel CPU since at the time, the best that they had was Bulldozer and they weren't really coming out with stuff. So now now seems like the right opportune time, but according to the WCCF tech article from four years ago, where it was can saying that the project isn't dead, but simply shelved till a more opportune moment arrives. We are at that opportune moment at AMD. Give me this project quantum PC. I will buy it. I will use it. I will, I will love it so tenderly. <laughs> What's also tender is that the RDNA 2 GPUs have been announced that they're going to support AV1 decoding. In case you're not familiar, AV1 is a video codec that allows things to be streamed more data efficiently, so it could actually compress to 50% better than H.264, which you're likely viewing this on now, and about 20% better than VP9. Encoding to AV1 isn't really readily available to content creators at this point, but decoding is gonna be something that's gonna be baked into not only the RDNA 2 GPU, but it's also in the RTX 30 series and Project Z graphics have been confirmed, which speaking of Project Z graphics, I've got my Tiger Lake notebook right here. Yeah, my Dell XPS 2 and one came in. Let's talk about GPU news for a second. AlphaCool announced its new ice blocks, which are actually absolutely beautiful looking, as you can see here. These are meant to be for server environments, but just the matte black finish on these gets me so happy. And you know what else gets me happy? Finally, potentially, maybe at some point in the future, getting gigabit upload on a cable network. Comcast beta testing this in Jacksonville, where they were able to get 1.25 gigabits up and down on their cable network, which is something that only fiber can do at this point. And so them rolling out a beta test could potentially mean that they can unveil it in more regions and then potentially my ISP would be able to do that. But speaking of beta testing, a feature that has been long awaited, Tesla announcing that their full self-driving beta should happen next Tuesday, October 20th. Elon Musk committing to the promise at the battery day that they had recently and then saying in a tweet, limited FSD beta releasing on Tuesday next week. This will at first be limited to a small number of people who are expert and careful drivers. So it's good to know they have their definition of what's expert. Hopefully it's not Elon because he'd be running over all them parking cones. Oh. He needs some milk. Then Razer had its own event called RazerCon where they unveiled a whole bunch of products that they're going to be coming out with, including new Tomahawk cases, mini ITX, as well as full ATX, as well as their first gaming chair, which improves your posture, but actually just looks like a suburban dad's beer gut i don't under like i get it's supposed to be like a fully adjustable lumbar setup but that just looks like it has a beer belly sorry razor that's not a good looking chair right there they're also announcing the 50 dollar siren mini for streaming it actually looks like a good little microphone that you could potentially use coming in at 50 dollars as well as in 
black, white, or pink varieties in case you want that, as well as announcing the world's first gaming ultrabook with the Core i7 Tiger Lake graphics, as well as a 1650 Ti and 120 hertz display in the Razer Blade Stealth 3. And then lastly, I mean, there was more than this, but this is what I care about, a Cyberpunk 2077 Razer Viper Ultimate Edition mouse, which you can check out right there. We'll leave links in the video descriptions for all of these in case you're interested. HyperX also announcing some wireless cloud buds to their audio lineup, having wireless wireless in-ear earbuds that are attached via string. These look like workout things. I don't know if I would necessarily trust this. $60 in case you're interested, up to 10 hours of battery life. Speaking of battery life, Apple's going to have that out to Wazoo when they come out with their own silicon. Apple preparing to launch its ARM-powered Max next month in November, according to a Bloomberg report. So we could expect for that to happen in a 13-inch MacBook. We'll have to see how powerful it is, what the battery life savings are, but it should be quite decent, according to all reports that we're hearing. Microsoft also announcing they need to get around Apple, who has shut down their streaming service with Microsoft using a web app to stream xCloud as opposed to an app, which then gets into store policies and having to take a 30% cut, which they don't want to do just like Epic Games doesn't want to do. But Google finally wanted to update their Nest thermostat because it's been out for a decade and hasn't really changed design. And now it is a more minimalistic kind of mirror reflective finish and has a few extra features that make it better for autonomous house use, as well as the fact that it no longer has the physical ring it's actually touch sensitive to change the temperature which is how they're able to slim down the size of the thermostat and it doesn't look like fall guys is going to slim down because they are going to chunk up for what is probably one of the worst skins i've seen sonic coming to fall guys tomorrow gosh no you guys are the ones that ruined sonic for everyone when will you learn you freaking bricks fantasies can't ever be quenched and Roblox can't be quenched without more cash infusion because they've done an SEC filing for going public. They're expecting an $8 billion valuation when they go public early next year. And the game that went public recently, not as far as like an IPO status, but just people being able to play it, Genshin Impact, which apparently looks like a Breath of the Wild knockoff with a few loot box elements incorporated, made $100 million in two weeks. It is the most successful new IP launch for a Chinese developer. 17 million downloads on mobile. It This is a crazy game, $100 million. That's a lot of cash. Have you been playing it? I've seen that it's wildly popular over on Twitch. Want to hear what you think of the game. Also, want to hear what you think of leaving me alone. Because it's the end of hot news. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Staying up to date with all of your tech news. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow, especially with the iPhone 12 being announced today. It's happening after we filmed Hot News, so we can't cover it in this episode. So it'll be covered in tomorrow's episode in case you want to know more about Apple's latest phone. I'm Brett. You've been newsed. Goodbye.